Guess who's back? Guess who's back? It's your Wisconsin Wine Guy back again with another wine review. And I review wines that you can find on the shelves. And these are everyday wines that you can find on the shelves in almost any local liquor store, grocery store, and some wine shops. I go through, make a selection of wines, give it a taste, and give you my personal opinion based on my palate, what I think about the wines. Very, very simple system. Thumbs up, meaning I recommend that wine. Give it a try. You won't go wrong with it. I'm digging it. Three quarters. You know what? Hey, if it's at a party and someone's pouring it, I would drink that. And if, and if it's really good, I may even grab a couple of bottles. I'll go to the store and buy a couple of bottles, I should say, and bring it home and share it with my friends. Halfway, mm, not so much for me. I'm not digging it. I'm not feeling it. And again, that's my palate. You may have a completely different experience with the wine, but you give it a try and let us all know what you think. Thumbs down. Mm. Wow. Sometimes you find those wines that you have high expectations and it just let you down. But that's why. That's diversity in wine. So now today's show, you can see kind of like the top what's going here. We got a white and a red. I love to have wines from the same winery. I can get a feel for the winemaker's hand in the wine. You know, when I spent time in the Virgin Islands, they didn't say, hey, can you cook? I like to taste your cooking and say, I want to taste your hand. I thought, what? <laughs> but taste your hand, you know. So I, I equated that to wine, you know. Like I want to get a get a get an idea of the winemaker's hand for making the wine. Is it a heavy hand? Is it a hand that fluctuates and changes? Is it a subtle hand? You know, I want to know. I want to feel it. And sometimes you can find that out by tasting a series of wines that they make at different levels. If they have different labels or different levels, so let's get to it. Line thirty nine is the wine. Line 39 coming out of California. The white wine is going to be a 2019 Sauvignon Blanc coming in at 13.5% alcohol. And we're going to be tasting that along with the Line 39 Pinot Noir, also from California. We're looking at a 2018 alcohol coming in at 13.5%. Now, Line 39. I should say the winery is located, the Line 39 is like the parallel Line 39, which is north-north of San Francisco, okay? So coming up there, you got a little section on the back of the bottle here. You can see that, Line 39. So I couldn't get in a fix on where these grapes are coming from, but areas in which they source their grapes from, which they have growing, or vineyards growing, would be in Napa, Sonoma, or Lodi, you know, and probably some things along the coast. So... I couldn't get a pinpoint where these grapes come from. However, we know it's around about in that area where they're sourcing the grapes from. Now, here's an interesting thing. Most times people tell you, white before red, light before heavy, dry before sweet. But you know what? I do something different when Sauvignon Blanc is in the mix. Because that Sauvignon Blanc, depending on what it tastes like, you know, can just totally kill. If it's too acidity, it's going to make the other wines flat. If it's too ripe and fruity, it's going to make the other wines sour. You just can't win, I find. You know, so I always like to do my Sauvignon Blanc second. You know, especially to even other white wines. Like unless it's a white wine that has enough acidity to stand up to it and enough flavor. But I always do my Sauvignon Blanc second, you know, when it's a, a white and a red counterpart. So we're gonna pour them both, as always, you'll pour like the core, both wines, and then taste them both side by side and give you my opinion at the end. This is a beautiful looking uh, Pinot Noir from California. Now we're gonna pour screw cap. So this was a cork. The red and the white is going to be a screw cap. Screw cap alert. Now, you know how I feel about that. You know, I don't stand on ceremony because I'm concerned with what's in the bottle. What's in the bottle is much more important to me. If it tastes bad, guess what, folks? It went into the bottle that way. You can't blame it on the cork. You can't blame it on oxidation. You can't blame it on shrinkage. You can't blame any of that. It just went to the bottle that way. All right? So here we go. Nice little swirl. Both of these wines coming out of the bottle, opening up. You know, it had a very nice aroma to it. Very nice bouquet. So here's a Sauvignon Blanc, okay? A greenish haze to it, a greenish color to it. It doesn't look like it on your end, but on my end, there's a slight greenish tint blended in with the yellow. All right? On that end, looking in the video, from what I'm seeing, it's like almost like a clear with yellow tints. All right? Completely different. It's video. The Pinot Noir, okay? Pinot Noir. Now, coming out of California, Unlike maybe Oregon or Oregon or uh, France, 
the Pinot Noir, the grape is going to be a lot riper, so it's going to be a lot darker. Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? So now we're talking about, you know, deep purple, deep garnet color here, you know, so a lot darker than Pinot Noir. Let's give it a nose. Yes, yeah, I said, Sauvignon Blanc goes second. So let's do a nose on a Pinot Noir first. Let's just call that P-N or p <laughs> All right? Mm. Wow, that nose is phenomenal. I mean, dense fruit, almost like cooked fruit. You know, like if you're getting ready to make a sauce. And then there's those undertones of some citrus notes to it. For me, cherry and plum, but more cherry. Oh, that's nice. And you get those hints of vanilla coming in. That's from the oak aging. Now for the Sauvignon Blanc. Stainless steel. Wow. Now, Sauvignon Blancs from almost anywhere outside of New Zealand. All right? It's not going to give you that crazy acidity. You know, it's not going to give you that crazy intensity of grassy notes and, and grapefruit. You know, but you're going to get those. But in a much more subtle or subdued form. But here, grapefruit for sure. Grapefruit with the undertones for me of white peach, but that grapefruit is just right there. It's very nice. So very fresh, very pleasant. Now just on the nose alone tells me if I were to drink this first, that Pinot Noir, dead on arrival. Dead. Alright, so that was your wine tip for white before red. Red for sweet, yeah, forget all that. But if a Sauvignon Blanc is involved, yeah, Sauvignon Blanc isn't, isn't going to go first. <laughs> In my palate, that's for sure. So let's give it a taste. Now, I can't go back and forth. So I'm going to taste this twice. I'm going to do my rinse because I want to taste acidity. And then after my rinse, then I'm going to taste it and to, to come to a conclusion of what I think about it. Then I'm going to go and taste the Sauvignon Blanc, do the same thing. And then I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to see if the Pinot Noir would play nice at the Sauvignon Blanc. Can these two wines play nice together? Let's find out. All right, so here we go. Acidity first. Mm. Wow. Very elegant. Balanced across the board. Balanced with the fruit. Balanced with the oak. Elegant, as I said earlier. Very, very elegant. Very pleasing, but easy to drink. There is. For me, those cherry and plum notes. I like the way my mouth waters. Mm. I think if it's, it's very nice drinking Pinot Noir. Okay? It's not going to be, oh my God, it's going to evolve, and it is, but maybe it will. But right now, if you just open the bottle and just pour it and drink it, very elegant, very easy, very smooth, very nice to drink. You know, I think the balances are right there. The balances and components, you know, for me, it's all right there on my palate. One more taste. Mm. Wow. I know how I'm going to rate that one. Now let's go to the Sauvignon Blanc. Acidity first. Ah, grassy citrus. Ah. <laughs> you can get carried away with the smell stuff. But well, here we go. Pinot Noir, gone. It's like I never even had this wine. Gone. You see what I mean? Try it yourself. You'll see exactly what I mean. Pinot Noir is gone. <laughs> wow. No, no traces whatsoever. All right. So that's pretty nice. Nice acidity. Very, very flavorful. I mean, even the Pinot Noir had a nice long finish to it. Very, very flavorful. Nice finish, but gone. Pinot Noir. Now for the taste. Mm. Mm. Again, not the New Zealand type Sauvignon Blanc, 
but it has all the trace elements, characteristics, refreshing, you know, a subtle richness to it, but very nice, very nice to drink. Now I'm going to see if they play nice. Let's go back. You just got to go back here. We ain't going to go back there. Let's see if they play nice. Hmm. The Pinot Noir is holding its own. The city is gone, but the flavor comes out more from the Pinot Noir. But the Sauvignon Blanc killed the acidity here, but all the flavor, the juiciness of the red fruits come straight through. So I think they play nice together. Mm. But to me, again, there's a little tartness. Okay, again, that's what happens. But they play nice together. So again, what I talked about earlier, tasting that winemaker's hand, you know, that if you had the whole line of these wines, it'd be interesting to find out if all the wines, if you taste in order and then backwards or out of order, will they all play nice together? But so far between these two, yes, they do. So now for the rating, how would I rate these wines? Pinot Noir, Wisconsin Wine Guy says, mm -mm -mm. I'm going to give this a thumbs up. I mean, Easter's coming. Summer's coming. Elegant. Easy to drink. You know, uh, it's not going to go up and down and spike and this, you know, but I think as you begin to drink it, you know, it just puts you in a state of calm. That's what I enjoy about it, you know, very much. Nice fruit, you know, 13.5% uh, alcohol. Again, as I said, for me, elegant. Easy to drink. Thumbs up. I'm digging it. I'm enjoying it. I, I would, I would buy some of this. I don't know if I would buy some just to age, but I would buy some as an everyday drinker for sure. That's a 30 line, 30 line, Pinot Noir, 2018. Sauvignon Blanc. Mm. Go back to Sauvignon Blanc. Now the Pinot Noir says, hey, wait a minute, back it up, back it up. <laughs> I love when wines, you know, play dirty with each other. Mm. So if you all block again across the board, easy drinking, good flavor, refreshing, you know what you want. Not spiky acidity, you know, but very nice. Thumbs up. So line 39, Pinot Noir, 2018, line 39, 2019. So if you want Blanc, it was Wine Wine Guy. Give both of these wines a thumbs up. I, I think you would enjoy these wines. I, I, I would say you won't go wrong you know, by purchasing these as, as good everyday drinkers. So I'm going to continue indulging and enjoying these and, and continue to have this, this taste off between these wines. It's your Wisconsin Wine Guy saying, as always, let your palate be the guy selecting your wine. Thanks for joining me. Ciao.